Mountains, there was a fairly significant commercial goose hunting uh, operations going on in central South Dakota. And as you're aware, um, especially non-resident waterfowl licenses are set in state law, and so there was a limited availability of those, and some of the uh, so commercial operations had an interest in being able to in, increase their clientele base. So in 1997, uh, our staff meeting with local legislators and sportsmen um, ultimately led to a legislation in 1998, uh, which the bill that was passed created 2,000 three-day non-resident waterfowl licenses available on private land in a five-county area in central South Dakota. A condition of the sale of those licenses was that the department secure the rights for public hunting opportunity on private land within that same general area. So as I said, initially there was 5, 000, or 2,000 licenses available. Along the way, um, that was there was a change in legislation that allowed the movement of 500 of those licenses to the northeastern part of the state, uh, where in that portion of the state they're valid both on private and public land. So our Lower Wahi Waterfowl Access Program is primarily located north of Pier, uh, pretty much on the uh, Hughes-Sully County line. We do have some properties leased also in Stanley County. This past year we had a little over 36,000 acres leased in the program and our annual contracts vary from, with landowners vary from one to five years in length. In the central part of the, uh, the area we have what we call our registration trailer and I'll explain the, uh, how that process works here shortly. But overall we have just a list of the fields, several uh, 51 fields this last year that had some form of registration required and then numerous fields where um, it's just pretty much come and go. In recent years, um, and I'll give credit to Andy Lindblom who was our former Region 2 Wildlife Manager and now following on with Nathan Baker and Tim Withers, they did a lot of work over recent years. Initially all those leased lands were strictly waterfowl hunting but they've done a lot of work over the last number of years to open those properties up for other hunting opportunities. And so on many of these properties, upland game hunting is allowed, especially ahead of the, the arrival of the geese. And the picture just showed Tim Withers, who manages the program for us this past year. Uh, they did some work constructing some new pits in the area. We make the public aware of the program through various uh, means. In, in past years we created a, excuse me, simply a separate waterfall hunting guide. This past year we merged that into the overall hunting guide. Um, the basic information is still all the same, describing the, uh, the special rules for each of the individual fields, but uh, trying to get that information out to more people and make them aware of the program. Uh, the guide also includes the map that shows all the, uh, said the blue, most of the blue fields have some sort of registration required. The other fields, canals, as I said, are on a first come, first serve sort of basis. A couple other tools we use. Um, this past season, the season began early November, ran through February. Um, you see the weekly waterfowl reports on our website with the uh, thunderstorm map. Uh, beginning in typically then in uh, early November we also fly the reservoir system um, not only Lake Oahe but all, oftentimes all the way down the Missouri River through um, Charles Mix and down into uh, Bonhomme and Yankton counties and those weekly waterfowl numbers are posted on our website and then in this day and age uh, again Tim working with Chris Marsh uh, we also have a smartphone application, and one of the unique features of this, if you have it loaded, is, is that you can click on, on some of these individual fields, and it will give you an indication of the current cropping practice on that field. And then plus, as we mentioned earlier, when we allow upland game hunting and then may close it as the geese arrive, uh, that information will be there as well. So if you're into smartphones, and that's a pretty useful application. 
The registration process uh, in those fields that require hunters, they show up at the trailer. The, the registration occurs an hour before sunrise. They simply fill out a registration card. It goes into the hat. Uh, first card out gets pick of their field for the day and so on. We run that registration and trailer essentially every day with the exception of Christmas. We also have some loaner equipment available there for folks who may not have all the equipment for especially hunting geese, um, laser range finders to help them understand how far those birds may really be away. Um, and we also have some decoys available. And right now our staff is working, uh, hoping come this fall that we're actually going to have a essentially a trailer fully equipped with decoys, layout blinds, essentially everything you'd need to, to hunt geese with the exception of your shotgun and shells and your personal clothing. Um, Tim Withers is take, again taking the lead on that. Uh, he's already got commitments from some of the local um, Delta Waterfowl and Pier, the Pheasants Forever chapter have already made some commitments as well as uh, some of the companies that uh, the supply equipment have made commitments for perhaps not necessarily donations but uh, substantially reduced costs. So said so we're hoping to have that available for those who folks that may like to give it a try but uh, don't have a lot of uh, equipment to invest in. So just a summary of this last year um, really was probably our best year ever and Cindy does a lot of the assembly of this for us. But what I point out, this is the satisfaction of the hunters using the registration portion of the program. So these are the guys that come to the trailer and fill out the cards. And as you can see over the last 10 years, um, the satisfaction rating of the hunters using the program has been consistently at 80% or higher. And I'd just like to point out 2011 uh, to demonstrate that satisfaction may not always necessarily be related to success. While 2012 was by far uh, the best success in terms of harvest, um, even though the number of geese harvested in 2011 was relatively low compared to the last 10 years, hunter satisfaction still remained high. Um, as I said, these are this year well over 3,500 3, geese um, harvested just from those registration fields. We don't know the harvest from the areas where folks can come and go, the canal areas, some of the other areas. So the overall harvest was substantially higher than that in the area. And then as I said, uh, the area sees a lot of use early in the year from pheasant hunters and other small game activity. And we attract hunters from a wide area of the state, um, as you would suspect in the Pier Fort Pier area, but 56% of the hunters this last year came from outside of that immediate Pier Fort Pier area. And I just point out these non-residents are hunting on the 10-day uh, the license that's valid on both um, private and public land. And then I'd be remiss if I didn't give kudos to the uh, the group of volunteers that run they run an annual youth hunt there in the early part of January. Uh, like the overall program this year, this was probably one of the most successful youth hunts they'd had, um, not only in the quantity of food consumed, which is the important thing for a youth event, but the reality is they had a very successful hunt in terms of the total number of geese harvested as well. So with that, uh, I'd take any questions anybody might have. Does anyone have any questions? Well, thanks.